as Cindy says in those auto dealer ads, you better believe it. Thank you, Greg and Brian. Hello, everyone. After two years of development and filming, AMC will finally unleash Preacher May 22nd. Adapted from the controversial 1990s comic book, the series features Jesse Custer, a West Texas person of the cloth who sets out on a journey to find God. Trouble is, Dominic Cooper's character has a demon inside him every step of the way that at any step can unleash a force you don't want to witness. And if that's not enough, there's an ex-girlfriend named Tulip, played by Ruth Nega, and Vagabond Cassidy, played by Joseph Gilgan, who sticks like glue on his travels. Yes, he's Irish. A heads up for some viewers, this preview has some graphic violet images. Let's nice. watch. Yeah. <laughs> What do you want, kid? It's about my dad. I want you to hurt him. You know it's a sin just to ask me that. I know. People said before you were a preacher, you did things. How hurt you want him? How far do I go? Problem is, your daddy's a big fella. He's gonna fight back. Things will escalate. That's what these things do. They escalate. And violence makes violence. Makes nothing much at all. Preacher! Enough! Almost done, Sheriff. <laughs> is that what you want, kid? Jesus, what kind of a preacher are you? <laughs> <laughs> Breaking Bad producer Sam Caitlin oversees the ride, whose debut follows the mid-season finale of Fear the Walking Dead. Now, as for Feed the Beast, coming June 5th, you won't find much supernatural. However, you will travel to the Bronx, where best friends Tommy Moran and Dion Patras get one last chance to reach the goal of their lifetimes, operate a restaurant. Former Friends co-star David Swimmer, lately on FX's American Crime Story, plays Tommy. Jim Sturgis is Dion. As they learn with you, the business of Dishing Eats has its tasty moments and more than a few nasty moments. Trust me. Yes, that was a fast clip. And yes, you will believe the local organized crime rep, played by Michael Gladys, goes by the Tooth Fairy. Feed the Beast was produced here in New York by Lionsgate and marks the first work of executive producer writer Clyde Phillips since the award winning dramedy Nurse Jackie with Edie Falco. AMC believes has a pair of winners in Preacher and Feed the Beast. Judge for yourself. Since they Feed the Beast was supposed to premiere May 31st, didn't because of the end of Roots on History Channel that same night. TechCrunch Disrupt is underway here in Brooklyn at a warehouse terminal near the Battery Tunnel through Wednesday afternoon. We'll learn what TV technology. Technology news happens there next Monday when TechCrunch editor Anthony Ha comes by our BK Live studio. The following Monday, I'll be joined by the overseer of Northside's new TV content mini festival. If you haven't heard, Northside's become a big Brooklyn happening each June for local music and tech, with more than 100,000 people assembling there last year. And coming shortly on tomorrow, I'll be televised. I'll introduce you to the writer director of Submission, Showtime's latest late night drama that begins Thursday at 11. She's one of the first independent artists from the adult film world to break into television. Jackie St. James goes live with me, 3 o'clock on Blog Talk Radio. And also coming up on Monday, we will get the first of the broadcast network upfronts where NBC and Fox will both announce the new fall season lineups. NBC will be as we speak uh, next Monday. will be at Rockefeller Center to uh, at Racing Music Hall to explain that. And we hope to have some of the developments about what they're going to announce uh, right here on BK Live Monday. That's always a big day when they do those upfront. All the stars come in and pose and shake hands. And this year they're bringing, Brian, all the NBC stuff. It's not just NBC, the broadcast network, but Telemundo, NBC awesome. Universo, all the NBC Cable Networks, USA Sci-Fi, and so forth. A lot of people are wondering, can you pack all of that That's be huge. in uh, a two-hour ceremony at Ray City? Wow. Uh, you mentioned Roots. Are there any other special events happening on TV this summer that we're looking forward to? Like, what, what do we think about the Olympics? Yeah, we got the Olympics. That'll be on NBC. And maybe for the first time on NBC Universal and Telemundo, we'll be live in primetime for real. That would be a breakthrough for Spanish language television if that happens. Also, we've got coming up uh, some more shows on AMC, including a new series, uh, The Making of the Mob Chicago. 
Remember the banking mob, New York? But Stephen David, who I had in my show on Friday, uh, he's doing a new series that will deal with organized crime in Chicago. So I remember Crime Story, wonderful show on NBC for a couple of years in the uh, late 80s. Well, that will be uh, the scene from that. And also Kingdom, the mixed martial arts drama on DirecTV, is coming back for a new season on June 1st. And there'll be a lot more stuff coming up June, July, August. It'll be a very big year. Oh, Queen of the South on June 31st on USA Network, based on La Reina del Sur, the uh, famous Telemundo drama with Kate Del Castillo, who was over the weekend on Geraldo Rivera's uh, program on uh, Fox News Channel. And also, uh, coming up, we should say, there's a possibility that American Crime may be back for season three. More John Ridley okay. produced his pilot on a female private investigator in Los Angeles. ABC saw it. They liked it. However, there are other pilots for new ABC series, ABC dramas, that they may like better. Mm -hmm. And so they're giving hints to Ridley and to some of the other people involved with American Crime that they may bring it back for season three. We will know a week from tomorrow when Channing Duguay, the new head of ABC, uh, makes the announcement. Well, Brian was all bent out of shape. He almost didn't go on the air today because The Good Wife yes. ended its series last night. Seven years later, no more, Alicia. And people are talking about that finale. Can we talk? I'm not going to have any spoilers in case there are go my ahead. brethren out there who've yet to see what happened last night. <laughs> yeah, but there was me. this whole push and pull between the old and the new, and then we just got slapped back into reality. Literally. Literally. Little spoiler. Um, anyway, are they teasing another series that they're making? Yeah, what's happening with it? Not yet. Okay. But uh, Michelle and Robert King, the creators of The, the Good Kings. Wife and the upcoming Brain Dead, which will be also on in June on CBS, CBS. produced here in New York, uh, talked to the Hollywood Reporter. They talked to Deadline Hollywood. They made a lot of rounds of various uh, trade press and uh, and entertainment websites all over the place. Mm -hmm. And the big thing was they wanted last night to be a full circle deal. They wanted they wanted to show that slap. That uh, comes on the first episode where Julianne Marty's character slaps uh, Chris Nolte's character. Who could husband. forget? Yes. Uh, and then they wanted to bring it full circle to show you that now that it's like the other way around, where mm, gets slapped, that she has sort of learned everything from the last uh, seven seasons, uh, and it shapes her character. It's a wonderful scene, by the way, and Julia yeah. Margulies, I think, may be up for an Emmy Award just for that scene alone. Is she and married to Mr. Big Christine Baranski. Christine Baranski yes. has been nothing but master class in that role, which is, which I'm told is so different from her real personality in the beginning. And give credit, by the way, to the Kings for not only doing the show here in New York, where it's based in Chicago, but they also used a lot of New York theater actors, mm -hmm. Alan Cummings, Baranski, yeah. and others yeah. throughout the seven Josh seasons. Josh Charles. Josh Charles. See, I know Probably a thing or two about that show. I got a question. Who Brian mentions that? that he stayed with the series all seven years. I did. That was a huge hit when it came out, I believe. How do the numbers reflect, or like, how have they diminished over the years? Like, can you kind of quote a number from the first season? They haven't. How many people? I was still watching. No yeah, yeah, so you had Brian as the viewer. There was at least one. Um, <laughs> the first couple of years were very good. It was on Tuesday night at uh, 10 o'clock on CBS, and it was the beginning of the big run that CBS had that was later Unforgettable, Person of Interest, other shows as well. Limitless is occupying that time slot. And then the last two years, they moved it to Sunday Some nights, days, right. uh, either 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock. Oh, the ratings football. were not as great the last two seasons, but they still uh, uh, won the time slot when Sunday Football was not on. Stupid football is always moving around their shows. So we've gotten into that departing show. There's a lot of great shows we're learning about the upfront. But you mentioned that ABC has a new head mm. uh, from that division. We talked about uh, there was a woman who was hired as well there. So are there a lot of shakeups on the network levels? We know that Moonves is now doing everything at CBS. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be interesting to see when CBS comes out with their new schedule, which is a week from Wednesday at Carnegie Hall, how much they're going to do. A lot of their current shows have been renewed. Criminal Minds, by the way, which was on the bubble mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the cost of the show, it is coming back for a 12th season. <gasps> uh, they were able to get the license fee. One of the issues that TV, produ uh, TV networks have is they yeah. are preferring to do shows from their own production company. CBS has a television mm -hmm. division. ABC is ABC Studios, which right. does American Crime. And so if it's a show, if CBS runs a show from ABC or Same. from a Universal Television run by NBC Universal, they have an issue with license fees, mm -hmm. which can sometimes get out of whack, or with fees involving the casting. So CBS made the deal with ABC saying, okay, lower license fee. Even though you're one of the top rated shows on our network, we will keep you on another year. What is in play is the spinoff, Criminal Minds mm -hmm. uh, Beyond Borders with Gary Sinise. That we still don't know if that's going to be renewed. And we're still not certain yet how many of the new shows are going to be renewed. There is now being talk. That Supergirl, mm -hmm. which uh, got rave reviews, but the ratings have gone down ever since it premiered uh, last fall on Monday night. stuck with it. Brian loves Supergirl. Lies. Well, here's the news. <laughs> they may take it to the CW. Mm. 
The CW, by the Seems way, has renewed like all their new shows. Show. All their shows are renewed, old and new. I watch anything. But uh, if Supergirl does not make it on CBS's lineup, they can transfer it if they want to because they own part of the CW okay. over there. So just before we get out, I wanted to ask a quick prediction with the upfronts coming from uh, NBC and then CBS a week later. Do you see any trends? Like, we have those, like, those procedural, the CSI, when they made 50 of them. Like, Empire was such a huge hit last year. Are we going to see more family dramas? Like, what do you think is going to be the gravy train everyone's trying to get on. I think procedurals will make a, try to make a comeback in different ways. For example, they'll be more character-driven as opposed to case-by-case -case basis. Yeah. Look for perhaps some medical dramas mm. coming in. I know that, uh, that CBS show. has a show called Bunker Hill yeah. that a lot of people are very high on, and that may replace Code Black, which is the current medical drama it's on. And uh, Dick Wolf will continue. We'll have another Chicago Honor? show, oh. Chicago Justice. His Chicago thing continues. He's already working on a fifth show, by Fire, the way. Police. And uh, but I also think you will see some out-of-the-box stuff, especially from ABC, which really, really needs it. They have a lot of problems to deal with. Tuesday nights is an issue. Mm. Wednesday nights Kelly is a tennis issue. issue. Kelly and Michael are an issue. <laughs> um, and I'm curious to see whether CB, uh, ABC, which will do a game show block on Sunday nights, June through the summer, with Celebrity Family Feud, the revival of the match game, which will be here in New York, the revival of Pyramid, which will be here in New York, also with Michael Strahan Pyramid. hosting. Oh. Yes, he will still Straight. do that show. More Strahan. That might be uh, a wave of the future where you will see the uh, okay, Game, right. game show block coming in. Simon, thank summer. you very much. Thank uh, you. Welcome, Brian. Tomorrow will be televised with Simon Applebaum. Check out the podcast. Check out the website. Check it all out. Three o'clock, Black Talk Radio. As always.